Thank you very much indeed. The whole reason we're here and the whole reason these talks happen is for the Scuba Trust. And um, the Scuba Trust are a, a great organisation involving great people uh, that do something pretty wonderful, really. So I'm just going to talk about one of those people. And um, every now and then in life, you meet someone who is genuinely special and genuinely a bit different and has a spark in them that just will not be extinguished regardless of what happens to that person. And as such a person is, is Barry, uh, Baza, Baza West. And uh, Baza's motto is, uh, one life, live it, and, and bring it on. And uh, basically, uh, he leads, he goes through life chin first. They say, you know, the best thing you should do in life is lead with a chin. Well, uh, Bazar operates his, his chair with his chin. He's got bring it on tattooed on the back of his neck. I find it impossible to ever arrange anything to do with uh, Bazar. Last show, I was like, mate, we've got to go diving together. He said, well, we, we could, but I'm going to ski next week. So, <laughs> so that's what it is. And a truly, truly uh, inspirational bloke, you know, constantly uh, doing absurd things and living a life that all of us would give anything to lead. And um, enjoys partying as well. <laughs> so um, uh, what I'd like uh, to do, just as a closing thing, as I said, all of this is about uh, the Scuba Trust. It's the reason we're here. The reason the speakers turn up is to support the Scuba Trust. Myself and Rick aren't paid a penny for coming to this. It's to support the Scuba Trust. Um, the guys organise it to support the Scuba Trust. You get the RGS to support the Scuba Trust. And to really find out what they mean, just for five minutes or so, I'd just like Bazza to come down and, and tell us what the trust means to him and what diving means to him as well. So Bazza, if you want to come down here. Bazza. Delayed slightly this evening because I uh, bloody lift broke on me. <laughs> so uh, they didn't want a chance to be going up on the second lift on here. So uh, I'm just going to raise up and speak from here. So yeah, I'm Bazza. As Mom just said, uh, I was injured many years ago, about 15 years ago, nearly 16 years now. Uh, I just swerved to miss a badger, hit a bloody tree, and broke my neck C4, C5. So. From the age of 19, I've lived uh, in, in a chair similar to this, like one says, leading with my chin. With no use of my arms and shoulders, no use of my legs, and thinking, fuck me, how am I going to carry on a little like this, you know? We all think we've got a, a dodgy week when the, a bill comes in, or we, we damage our leg or something, you know? And uh, I woke up sort of the next morning after swerving from this bloody badger. Thinking, how am I going to live like this? You know, I, I really didn't know. Um, I, I woke up in, in one hospital, but then they said I was too extreme for them, so they moved me on to uh, another spinal unit up in Stoke Mandeville, um, which they won. They, they acclimatised me to, uh, to they, they done skull traction, um, which is involving drill both sides of your skull to. Um, to stabilise my bones like that, so I was four and a half months lying out laying down on my back, looking up at the ceiling, thinking, bugger me, what the <laughs> And uh, I was also on a life support machine, so I couldn't breathe for myself for the first uh, four and a half months. But as time went on, it got to about 11 months, 12 months, and it was time for me to be sort of released. They thought, release the beast, so, and even though I was excited to go, but I was a little bit scared as well, because uh, I'm used to running about like a blue-ass fly, you know, just doing day-to-day -day things like many of you, and uh, cutting a long story short, just uh, sort of a few years down the line, I got um, asked if I would go to, it's called a Sports for Tetris which is tetraplegic, what I'm classed as, where I've lost use of my limbs. And I'm thinking, how many sports is there? Tetraplegics. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I thought, there's only so much bloody play football you can play. <laughs> So, 
time for men, and uh, one of the people that was there was a Scuba Trust, and uh, they bought some video there and showing uh, what people do with disabilities. But at the time, I'm thinking I didn't feel confident enough to be able to do some of the things they were showing me on video. So I joined up as a member, and uh, I thought, yeah, I'm going to do it. Even though, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I was on a life support machine, so I've only got 40% of my lung capacity. And I thought, hmm, they ain't gonna like, accept me to be able to do it. So, and I wasn't ready to be rejected right then. And uh, you wouldn't believe it, it took me seven years to uh, gain the courage to give it a go, you know. Um, after being involved with another charity, I, I lead like adventure courses on that now, but I went on a, a course there doing the uh, kayaking, zip wires, sailing, um, getting pushed into a swimming pool and not really enjoying it. Thinking, how the bloody hell am I going to breathe? They don't turn me over. <laughs> so, but cutting a long story short, that gave me a bit more confidence to, uh, to ring the scuba trust and say, what do I need to do to be able to, to try it? And they says, uh, what you need to do is get hold of a diving doctor, get checked out, and then come for a try dive. And I'm thinking, shit. <coughs> I, I was thinking, they're going to reject me, like I said, about my breathing. And uh, so I went to the diving doctor, and they said, yeah, yeah, you just arrange a meeting to come up and see us. And I'm thinking, right, oh, okay. Another year's gone down the line and I'm thinking, I really want to do it because all my life I've kept fish. And I've looked at him in the tanks and I thought, I see what it's like to swim like them. And the nearest you can get is scuba diving for that, I, I believe. So it was like, mm, right, let's, let's buy the bullet, let's go for it. I didn't find a diving doctor, I just went up for a try dive and said, yeah, I've been checked out. <laughs> signed by uh, my spinal consultant, which uh, said, Basil, if you want to do it, you do it, man. And uh, he was like the top consultant of a, a spinal centre up in Buckinghamshire. <coughs> and I'm thinking, if he said I can bloody do it, I can do it. So, uh, yeah, cut the long story short, I went and done a try dive And uh, I remember on that first try dive 45 minutes to try and get a bloody wetsuit on me. <laughs> and it was like, oh man, that was quite tiring. But um, I remember the first time I'm getting hoisted into the water and I'm sort of getting lowered down in the water with my voice. It's going like this, I'm getting in the water, getting in the water. And then once I got in the water, Frank, uh, one of the instructors there, it's going, you're right, just rest your head back on my end. It's a long time since I've had my, my head in the bloke's hands. <laughs> but uh, I was there sort of trying to be relaxed, thinking, like that, and thinking, shit, am I really going to do this? So we got all the apparatus on, they sort of loaded me up with the, uh, the tanks and that on the back, and um, said, right, oh, you ready to go down? Talk me through all the bits they're going to do. I can't really remember what I said, but they sort of what they're going to do and then we're going to go down and I'm so you ready to go down, yeah. Now I'm sort of being lowered down in the water. Uh, thinking, I oh, wish I had a neck like a bloody giraffe right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was not, oh my God, I'm going down because as uh, what, 800 divers here, you know, it's sort of not natural to uh, be under the water and breathe, is it? Which is bloody crazy. <laughs> but, uh, so I've lowered down in the water and I'm thinking uh, I know, two minutes up and I'm like you done <laughs> and uh, I remember it, the, one of the things they said was just nod your head slow something's not right or nod your head really fast if it doesn't feel right I'm like, <laughs> And so we've gone up and he says, what, what's up, I, I'm gripping so hard on this, my cheeks are hurting. 
And he said, oh no, you don't need to correct me, I've done that. So, oh. so we've gone down again. He said, we'll just go for a little swim round just to get you to feel what it's like. And uh, so we just went for a swim round this, and then said what bits and that we'll do next month. And uh, I was a little bit scared to go back the next month, to be honest, because I was thinking, I really want to do it, but it was tough to push myself to, to want to try and do it. But uh, that's what's great with the Scuba Trust. They was there for me, all volunteers. That's the core of the Scuba Trust, is each and every person that's there is a volunteer that goes there because it's their passion to scuba dive. But they've got a bigger passion to uh, push other people to do it with the disabilities they have. And uh, to cut the long story short, it took me about a year, which I know it normally takes about five dives. I was a little bit slow on the uptake, but uh, I remember when we was doing the mask clearing, and uh, she in your handbag, that's hard work, isn't it? <laughs> Imagine it's hard work doing it with your hands, isn't it? But you've got to try and be ready when someone else is pulling the mask off your face. The water was going in and it's... <laughs> and then back up, and then Frank goes, I'll tell you what we'll do, is we'll just go on the step of the swimming pool. I'm thinking, yeah, Christy, because I can see the surface from here. <laughs> so we spent many, many months uh, just on that one step, and I'm thinking, shit, I ain't going to do it. I want to do it, but that was scary. My friend goes, don't worry, if we do it, doesn't matter how long it takes. I'm thinking, yeah, but I want to do it now. Uh, so I thought, right, I'll practice at home in the shower. <laughs> so I thought, I'll put a mask on and go under the shower thinking, He's a big, what man I am. So I'm there like this, thinking, so you ready for me to pull it forward, Jack? I'm like this, thinking, yeah, you ready? <laughs> hang on, hang on. And yeah, even that, I was half drowning myself in a bloody shower. <laughs> but cut the long story short, it took me about a year to, um, to do all the, the training and whatnot, what you need to do be t to become sort of, uh, know what you're doing in the water a little bit. And then uh, Holiday was booked to go out to Egypt to finalise uh, my open water. <coughs> I'm thinking, shit, is man, I'm going to actually do it. I've gained so much more confidence from afterwards through doing the mask clearing that I thought, bloody hell, I'm mortal now. I can do anything, you know? And it's not just about <coughs> doing diving and go down and see nice fish. For myself, it had made me feel so much more confident in my day-to-day -day life for things that uh, we'll take for granted, really, that uh, certain aspects of life Toiletry needs, yeah, we run to the toilet and go for a pee. Do you know what I mean? And, and all them things are taken away. It's not just a matter of sitting in a chair and you're driving about. As Mom says, I drive this uh, chair by chin. And uh, most people see in chairs that we lean about, sort themselves out. And I say, 24 hour care at home, non stop. So uh, the, the, the experience with the Scuba Trust has enabled me to be able to open up and to step over barriers that I never thought was possible. And that's through uh, volunteers being there, giving up their own time. Not something to be going for and getting paid for it, just being there, you know? Giving their own time to be able to do that through something they're passionate about and through something they want to push somebody else onto. And that's what we're here for this evening, to be able to hopefully push more barriers down for people like myself, you know, that thinks, hmm, what's life going to be like? And with your support, things like that is going to feel so much easier for other people, you know. We all take for granted, don't we? Jump on the end of the boat, jump off, and we're down there, but uh, the Scuba Trust is pivotal in that for uh, being there in support for people like myself and other people, you know. Uh, I'll just tell you quickly, because I know we're, we're rushed for time, but we went out to Barbados uh, this year as well. 
And you know, normally you get down, step on the boat, jump in. In Egypt, yeah, it was wheeled down, getting chunks in a manual chair, wheeled down to the boat, lifting, yeah, Christy, I'm on. And in Barbados, it was, tell me the day before what was going on, and I'm thinking, Shit, this must be quite daunting because they give me a day's warning. <laughs> and, and it's like, uh, right, how it's going to happen is you're going to get lifted out of this chair into another manual chair. You're going to get lifted onto the deck, which is 100, 150 metres away from the sea, into your wetsuit. And that's another thing I'll say actually, 45 minutes to an hour. The first wetsuit I ever took me that on, and for a company called Easy Zip, I don't know whether you've heard of it, is uh, they've designed my wetsuits now with zips all the way up the legs and all the way up the arms, so I don't have to spend a bloody hour like a fortunist to try and get it. So uh, if you want an easier way of getting a wetsuit, look up Easy Zip. <laughs> but to uh, cut the long story short, we're in a wetsuit, we get chucked into a beach chair. <laughs> that's got big old wheels on, and said, right, what's going to happen is you're going to wheel down 100, 150 metres to the sea, and then you're going to get wheeled into the sea, pulled out by two strapping uh, Caribbean fellas, not I mean to them, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they, they was there to help us, so we, we get wheel, wheeled into the water, lifted into uh, the water after the tides got up to the wheels, sort of floated out to the boat and then uh, points up on the boat by another strapping fella carries my manual chair out on his head to the boat. We're lifted onto the boat and then it's like bring it on. And I'm shit scared about getting onto a chair in Egypt and then getting on the boat that way. It just made the whole experience even more eventful, you know, even if I thought I didn't have it eventful enough. <laughs> but uh, that's just shown a few experiences uh, from me, really, to show that what we're in here for is, is showing that support. And it's great like that, that Ricky dives down deep in them bloody crazy caves <laughs> and Mod doing what he does, uh, total legend. And uh, it's great that we've got people like that behind us, you know, to uh, show what is doable. And, uh, I remember Andy was out in the bed tonight, the first time I met Andy, one of the instructors. And he goes, so what else do you do then, Baz? Uh, what made you do scuba diving? And I remember saying a comment that I said earlier, there's only so much bloody blow football you can buy. <laughs> so, uh, Scuba Trust, you know, and the core of the Scuba Trust is through volunteers. So if you're too bloody tired to give a quid tonight, at least give an hour of your time the second Sunday of every month. And we're up in uh, Ascot. Yeah. Ascot. Got the place right. So I'll send you to the right place. Look up the Scuba Trust. The Scuba Trust website is just being redone, but look up on the Scuba Trust website. If you want to have a little taste of what I've been talking about tonight, you know, and really pushing barriers down for other people similar to myself, that's enabling us to be able to see things that we thought was untouchable, you know. Get down there, look at the Scuba Trust, and let's help other people rock and roll, because it's not about, listen to Mazza, look what he's done, but let's have a think of what other people we can make them feel, you know. So, rock on. Thanks for listening, and you've been pretty good. No mobiles going off like this. <laughs> <laughs> Scuba Trust, scuba trust, give people like that is, is freedom. 
And as you know, you can't imagine can't put a price on that, can you? So well done, guys, I just got a quick video. Bring it on, mate. Uh, And I'm not the telly tabby. <laughs>